Welcome to H2Hub and welcome to our third deep dive into the hydrogen economy. My name is Uwe Kerkmann and I'm the CEO of the H2Hub. We aim to strengthen the innovative power of the European hydrogen economy for a climate friendly and defossilized future. And our major task is to support startups in the hydrogen economy to bring their ideas into the market. It is at the moment a market dominated by big business. So it is very important to facilitate matchmaking, networking and hands on support for given necessary impulses by startups to ramp up the hydrogen economy in Europe. We at H2Hub are the central platform for hydrogen innovations as we connect startups with companies and research institutions, creating a collaborative, productive ecosystem. With a focus on startups, we identify and provide the critical and necessary resources for our H2 partners, be it funding, technical infrastructure, and most important of all, contacts and network to make an innovative contribution to the hydrogen economy. In these deep dive sessions, we present technology, we present startups and investment trends, and we discuss new applications and markets in the hydrogen economy with experts. Just as in diving and especially in deep diving, it is better to work together. So for us, hydrogen is teamwork. Today's deep dive is about money, where to find the funding for hydrogen startups. And hydrogen startups need a lot of money to finance their ideas, products or services, especially hardware startups working on electrolysis, fuel cell and industrial use of hydrogen need funding on a larger scale and they need it very early in the innovation process. Our recent survey of European hydrogen startups has shown that hydrogen startups most pressing need seems to be to secure funding and cash flow and survey responses to this um, in, on the, by the European uh, hydrogen startups demonstrate that the process for obtaining financing needs to be significantly simplified. These processes seem to be more complex and expensive than in other sectors such as the digital industry. This is true both for finding investors and acquiring public funding. 80% of startups surveyed by us are looking to secure over half a million euro of, of funding or investment and most of them with, uh, within the next six months. Experts deem that to be a very fast funding round in which it is difficult to succeed. It is therefore not surprising that many startups are looking for bridge investments to close the gap between cap table and the successful transfer of funds. And this is one side of the topic. On the other side, there is or seems to be a lot of money around. Many national and international funds, VC companies and private investors aim to make green investment and the potential of climate protecting technologies is seen by institutional investors as well as by private VCs or family offices. In addition to these purpose-driven investment strategies, and of course, in this case, the purpose is not merely idealistic, but also to make money, there are a lot of regional, national and European programs for subsidies, R&D, et cetera, to support all kinds of hydrogen projects. And are these different types of funding available for startups? Are they suitable or better easy to get, easy to manage and easy to spend for startups? What comes with the opportunity to get public funding or participate in a subsidized project? What do I have to take into account when I deal with a VC? And how do I approach corporate interested, corporates interested in financing startup ideas? I'm very happy today that we can discuss these points with experts from various backgrounds with different approaches and different opportunities they are offering for hydrogen startups. We have invited some exciting guests to join us and our three guests will show you what their organization does for startups and then we'll enter the discussion round about which kind of finance, financial support is the right one for your startup. So from our hydrogen network, from the H2 network, we have invited three wonderful guests. One is Jan Peter Beckmann from NRW Bank, uh, the um, federal state of North Rhine-Westphalia's official developing bank. 
Um, we have Yairim from Extensia um, from Berlin with us today, and Max uh, Maximilian Bock, Max from uh, Hightech Gründerform from HTGF, um, uh, a very interesting and a very successful fund in Germany to deal with investing in startups. So I would like to in, invite you three speakers to introduce yourself very briefly, and then we'll have some presentations by you and finally enter a discussion. So maybe Jan Peter is first. Okay, yeah. Thanks, Uwe, for the for the introduction. Yeah, my name is uh, Jan Peter Beckmann. I'm working for the for the NRW Bank, NRW Bank in Germany, in the western part of uh, Germany, and uh, here I'm working for the uh, advisory center for economic development and one of my major tasks is to uh, support companies startups and other companies um, to find um, funding for their purposes and in particular um, i have expertise on um, grant programs that means non-repayable grants uh, that means money you can get and you do not have to um, repay um, I may add that um, I joined the NRW Bank uh, one and a half year ago and before I worked a long time as a project manager in the field of sustainability and also learned the other side um, in terms of um, I learned also to how to acquire money for certain purposes. So I also bring this experience uh, in uh, doing my job. Yeah, maybe this um, about myself. Great, thank you very much. Looking forward to your presentation and talk about the public part uh, of the funding uh, situation. And now I'm looking for the private part uh, next. And um, Yair, we are happy to have you with us. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Uwe. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, my name is Yair M. Um, I'm a um, an investor, but by trade, I'm electrical engineer. So spent many years on the engineering side before transitioning into the investment side. Um, I'm one of the founders of a venture capital firm called Extancia. Extancia is a climate first venture firm. We founded Extancia uh, with the goal to finance uh, the companies that can uh, that work on the transition to get us to net zero. We only finance companies, we're tech agnostic, uh, we finance companies that uh, we believe can move the needle on climate change. The first question we ask companies is not how big you can be, but how much carbon emissions can you remove. We do carbon math at the beginning of every, every um, um, uh, investment that we look at. And then only then we look at uh, with the eyes of venture capitalists on making that investment as successful because we want to make sure that we close the allocation gap that money is not going just to one sector of the climate stack mostly uh, usually mobility but it goes to all the sectors uh, uh, that emit and also sectors that can remove emissions in this regard we are actually looking also in hydrogen we can talk about that later Today, we manage already over 100 million. Uh, we've done uh, 12 investments uh, to date uh, in different companies across different geographies, but our main focus is in Europe. Thanks. Thank you very much. You're yeah, looking forward to your presentation or to the exchange too, because you seem to be an example that there are different purposes uh, uh, why you deal with uh, high tech and why you deal with climate friendly startups. So I'm looking forward to that. And last but not least, uh, Dr. Maximilian Bock, um, Max from the uh, High Tech Gründerfonds, a very important player when it comes to support and finance uh, startups in Germany. Max, I'm looking forward to your introduction. Thank you. And thank you so much for uh, the invitation also. And it's great to be here. Um, to, to me as a person, I'm a physicist by training. I uh, studied in the UK and after my PhD um, over many rounds sort of ended up being an entrepreneur myself, went through the journey of uh, founding two startups. And that experience as an in and uh, of its own uh, led me then to become an investment manager at High Tech Underforce. Here um, I'm part of the industrial tech team, which is a team focused on um, innovations, tech innovations in the industry side, of which uh, hydrogen is definitely a, a very important component. And um, I would look forward to sharing more about what we do, how we operate uh, once we start with the presentations. Great. 
Thank you very much for that introduction too. I'm uh, really looking forward to discuss with this very uh, great round, uh, different angles of uh, and different approaches of financing and supporting hydrogen startups. So great to have you all with us. I would like to start with uh, Jan Peter though. Um, in the H2 Hub survey of European hydrogen startups, many startups expressed a desire uh, for easier access to public funding, to EU funding, to national funding, to regional funding. And they were also stating that current structures and funding applications are too complicated. One startup also pointed out that it can be easier to secure funding from a non-European investor than from European investors. And they were stating China, which I think is a very interesting signal towards public um, funding and, and national funding in Europe. Um, Jan Peter, you are working for the NRV Bank. And uh, how would you respond to this? Is there a difference between uh, public funding in EU, national or regional, and most of all, what is NRV Bank as a um, state federal or federal state developing bank doing uh, with respect of financing and supporting startups? And looking forward to your presentation and all the questions about China and differences can be uh, discussed in the discussion afterwards. First of all, let us hear what the NRV Bank is doing for startups and especially maybe for hydrogen startup. The virtual floor is yours. Okay. Uwe. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for handing over. Well, yeah. It's it's. A, I think it's it's a, a very interesting question uh, to to uh, answer about. Okay, where are the lowest barriers to to get money, for example? And uh, well, got, from from my experiences, I said I worked as a project manager and was also uh, did a lot of time in acquiring money. And what I can basically say is that when you go to the European level and try to acquire money there and you look at programs like Horizon 2020 or also like the, um, the um, European Innovation Council where you end up in tough competitions, I think it's quite, you, you have to put a lot of effort in there to, to get some money. I think there are indeed on the, on the German level or also on the, on the NRV, the federal state of, of North Westphalia, on this level you find, um, you find programs which are much easier to access. Okay, then, um, but let me shed a light on um, on this uh, throughout my uh, presentation. Um, I, um, I'm trying to see it also on my separate window here on this clicker um, window that gives me the opportunity, hopefully also to, um, to th switch through the, um, through the presentation. Ah yeah, now it no now it no it works now it works okay, well yeah maybe briefly about the um, about the NRV bank what we are doing um, we are um, the, the largest the largest promotional bank in in Germany and we are the the bank to uh, to support economic development in the federal state of Nordrhein Westphalia for those abroad Nordrhein Westphalia is the federal state in the very western part of Germany where you find cities such as Cologne um, Düsseldorf or Dortmund. We are um, owned by the by the state of Northern Westphalia, but at the same time we are um, we are budget independent. That means we we earn our own money, um, and we act in a, in a competition neutral way. That means, uh, for example, we can give you um, orientation on on where to find funding, but we cannot help you um, to uh, to fix your uh, or to set up your or you write your your project proposal. For example, this, this is an example of how to act in a competition neutral way. And we also act as a partner um, of banks and, and, and saving banks. That means if you ask for products of the NRW bank, you often have to go through your house bank and ask for these products. There are also some exceptions where you get the money direct in a direct way from us, but this does it mean. Um, basically, we have three uh, working fields, three promotional fields. One is really the, um, the development of the private sector. Uh, but we also have uh, public uh, clients. We support, for example, municipalities in, in doing investments. But we also address to, um, in, 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 we also work in the housing sector, for example, to, to, to help to support families to acquire residential property, for example. Maybe this is a picture of the, of the NRB Bank I, want, I would like to start with. Now, how can we help you as a startup in the, in the hydrogen sector? I would say we have basically two types of promotional services that can be of interest for you. One is uh, really to, uh, to give you um, advice on where to find funding uh, and also um, 
and that means uh, first of all uh, where you can where you can where you have grant programs suitable for your case that means uh, how to acquire money that you don't have to um, pay back this is one of the of the major uh, major tasks we do and here we address to both to startups but also to um, established uh, companies um, and we also have advisory services um, in terms of um, how to to help you to optimize your financial structure, for example, to, to gain more professionalism here, or also to prepare for the bank interviews, which is which can be also quite tough for startups who are not experienced to have these conversations um, with, with banks, for example. Here we have experts to support you on this. And all of these services, by the way, are free of charge. However, there's an important precondition. Uh, that means you, um, and, and this precondition is that you have, uh, that you need a relationship to the federal state of Northern Hemisphere. Ideally, you would have um, your company located here in this federal state, or at least you should have an affiliate here, or at least plan an investment. This is this is important that we are authorized to help you. Um, now, the second uh, promotional um, service we offer is that we have our own financial products. We offer, for example, seed capital uh, for uh, startup companies. We have a so-called venture center in our company. In, in the NRV bank, uh, and here we have experts that can you also that 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 it will help you to to, um, to 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 get equity through this uh, seed capital program. An important precondition here is um, that you bring your own money, that you have an investor that brings money or that gives you money, and we would give you the same amount um, again on or on top. And this is this is the the, the basic idea. But we also offer loans, for example, loans with uh, favorite um, interest rates uh, compared to others you find on the market. And um, yeah, this is uh, these are um, uh, our financial products we offer. We have experts here. I'm not an expert on on these products we have here. My 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 job is really to uh, to help you the to find the right way for for funding. Uh, but however, if you have any questions uh, afterwards, just address to me, and um, you find my contact uh, details on the last page, and then I would I would help you to um, to, uh, to to contact to to get you in contact with the with the right expert in in the bank. Now let me just um, add some words on the um, on grant programs in the field of um, hydrogen and um, yeah and and your innovation purposes. Uh, or investment purposes, um, and the the basic ideas. Are, let let let's start like this. My main message is: if you are if you are planning uh, in any investments um, or or to start up businesses in the hydrogen sector, do not only look for uh, programs which have the word hydrogen in their title, because there are many more possibilities. There are many more uh, corners to to look into to to find money and. I've tried to, to picture the, the hydrogen funding landscape a bit. And um, I, I'm, I chose the example of, of well, let, 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 me, let me say like this. You have, you have different um, political uh, levels. I put, would put it like this way, you can find money. It's the European level. I think most of you have probably got already some experiences uh, with uh, the European level. Also uh, looking at the questions you have, you have asked to, to, to Uwe beforehand. Um, but you have also programs on the national level, that means in Germany, or I think the same idea applies also for other countries in Europe. And in Germany, you would have also uh, programs uh, offered through the uh, federal state government. And here it's NRW Nordrhein Westfalia. And um, of course, first of all, if you, if you look for, for programs to, to support your business, you would, um, it, it, I think it's quite natural that you look for those programs who have hydrogen in their title. And um, it's 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 of course you would find a lot of programs here. If I think um, um, if I think for example of the EU Innovation Fund, right? This uh, this money uh, could be accessed by you if, to put it simple, if you have a new technological idea um, that supports renewable energies, and of course this covers also, for example, the production of green hydrogen. Then this program, the EU Innovation Fund, can be of interest for you. On the German level, you would have, for example, the Deutsche Bundesstiftung Umwelt, the German Foundation for Environment. And they would support um, projects, um, they, they would support R&D projects 
um, also in the field of renewable energies, but also first of all projects uh, or, or new solutions um, which bring some uh, desirable environmental impacts, for example. So this is this is an option for a lot of startups. They also have a startup program, by the way, uh, and this is this is an option or this is a program we often we often uh, recommend to companies and uh, including startups. Then you have projects, or then you have then you have programs you find um, in how I called it the sector development. For example, if you think of the mobility sector, uh, in a lot of European countries um, you have um, a strong support of the electromobility, and this, uh, of course, uh, includes a fuel cell technology. And by doing so, um, uh, governments spend a lot of money in uh, on this, and here you find a lot of programs too. So. If you manage to to link your business to uh, the automotive sector, for example, this can be also an access point to funding here. And then, the, as a third pillar, which I call innovation and digitalization, means of course there are nearly I think in every country there are a lot of programs that that foster innovation and digitalization. And of course, these programs are also of interest for you if you. Uh, are up to develop something new, be it in the hydrogen sector or be it in other uh, sectors. These programs can then can be also of interest for you. For example, if you think of the uh, digitalized um, monitoring processes of conversion rates or whatever, right? So this can be also a draw to 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 pull to open and um, where you can find uh, where you can find money. Um, However, to make a long story short, in the end, it depends on your individual case. What are the, let's say, the positive impacts of your business, and who are these, and, and whose interest you serve by uh, really um, generating these positive impacts? And this, at the same time, gives you access to possible funding. So, to make a long story short, um, in the end, if you, if you, um, if you would like to have some support to look on your case and and where you can find where you can find funding for for your business for your purpose then just contact me and it's either it would be then either me to to help you to find the funding or i would also point to a colleague we have for example colleagues are really focused also on, on supporting startups and yeah this is maybe from this is from 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 my side and um, yeah thanks for thanks for for listening so so far yeah, Peter, thank you very much for this very um, interesting insight in what NRV Bank is doing for startups, for hydrogen startups. And it's interesting and very helpful to know that you offer a lot of consulting and counseling when it comes to finding the right program for the startups. So thank you very much for this insight and we'll come back to that later. And now I would like to switch to Yair who looks at things from a different angle, I think, um, because I was very, uh, very a little bit surprised to know that obviously when a private VC is looking into startup financing, it's not only about uh, money results and scaling results, but also um, it's purpose driven that in your case, it's about uh, reducing carbon footprint and I'm really curious to learn more about your approach and what you're doing and what uh, Extancia is offering for startups and hydrogen startups in particular. Thank you, Uwe. Um, I will start by saying that we are for profit and we want to act and we uh, promise our investors uh, a venture return um, to their return investors. But that said, uh, we don't start there. We start with what makes sense on the transition to net zero. So we do a carbon math on every single company that comes in to make sure that that company can really move the needle. Now, if that company can really abate a lot of megatons of, of CO2, then we believe that that's a proxy also to making money, to becoming a unicorn. Why? because carbon has a price. So if you can really abate a lot of uh, emissions, then the likelihood that you can also make there is a market for your product is very high. Uh, in terms of technology readiness level, when do we invest? So we are venture capital, we're equity investors, we take equity in the company. Uh, we do tickets between one to four millions. 
Um, and the timing that we go into the company is what we call, uh, uh, what is known as the TRL system, the technology readiness level. We usually go in in, in technology readiness level four. That's where the proof of concept has been done in the lab. And now you want to scale. So we come in into the commercialization level rather than uh, uh, something that is still nascent and is pure research and development. And we, as we've heard, there are other means to support uh, uh, that type of, uh, of development. We really want to take something that is uh, first of a kind and help that scale up so that later, again, the banks and the government and the private equity industry can come in and find, finance the nth of a kind. So our uh, goal as a venture capital industry is to take the nascent technologies and really help them scale to become uh, competitive with fossil fuels because at the end of the day, all this transition is about money. Yeah, It's, it's uh, nice uh, that we all want to do something good for the planet, but that's going to be an add-on. At the end of the day, what we need to do is to build uh, technologies that are uh, uh, competitive and can be real alternative to, to fossil fuel-based uh, technologies. And only then uh, uh, the real divestment from fossil fuels will happen. In terms of, of hydrogen, what we do in hydrogen, we look at the entire value chain of hydrogen from, from the upstream, the electrolyzers, the production of hydrogen, uh, midstream, the uh, uh, the transportation of hydrogen to the downstream applications of hydrogen. Uh, we've done almost an investment in each of, the, of all of those sectors. We've done in, uh, in the upstream electrolyzers. Um, uh, we've done H2Pro in Israel, which is, for example, that's a membrane-less uh, electrolyzer. Um, by the way, if we've done one investment, that doesn't mean that we will do, uh, we will not do another one, but it needs to be orthogonal. So the two don't necessarily compete. And by the way, the market is big enough for many solutions here. So in, 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 I think that in energy, um, it's not just one winner takes it all. On the downstream, uh, we've done a techno an investment in, in um, actually in, um, in Karlsruhe in Germany in a company called Ineratec. Uh, that is using, uh, that is building synthetic hydrocarbons, uh, synthetic e-fuels or e-crude. Basically, they are using the green hydrogen and captured C to produce synthetic hydrocarbons in a chemical reactor. And we're currently looking into a company which is working on hydrogen liquefaction in the midstream. So basically, we cover the entire value train. What is though important for us, and we look at each and every single company as said, is we want to see the added value that each one of those hydrogen companies bring to the market that can be really a catalyzer to the transition into uh, a decarbonized uh, society. I'll pause here. Okay. Thank you from, so much. It's really interesting and, and it's really good to know and to hear that the entire value chain is of interest to you because uh, this is, of course, one outstanding difference of the hydrogen world and hydrogen economy um, as when you compare it to other uh, industries, sectors and branches that the value chain is quite long and the, uh, the uh, parts of the value chain are really different when you when you mention upstreaming sectors and, and downstreaming sectors um, it's a big difference from electrolyzing to uh, the use of hydrogen in in a car or a vehicle or a drone or whatever so very interesting thank you very much uh, for this input and last but not least i would like to switch to um, max who is introducing HTGF, the Hightech Gründerfonds of Germany. And Mike needs, yeah, yes. now we see you. Great. Good to see you now. And um, I'm really curious uh, for your short introduction and presentation of what Hightech Gründerfonds is doing for, especially for hydrogen startups or could do for them. You are a venture capital investor for innovative technologies and a public-private partnership, as I understand it. So I'm curious to learn how you are working, what you are targeting, and uh, what's in it for the hydrogen startup world. Great. 
Uh, thank you so much, Uwe, um, and happy to share what we're doing. Um, so Hightech Hunderfonds, uh, HGGF, uh, is a uh, truly German-wide uh, early stage investor. Um, just to give you a, a sense, we have um, many uh, different uh, sort of backgrounds in our team. We're uh, currently an organization of 100 people. Uh, I myself, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, studied physics, uh, went down the venture route myself, founded Mondanio Networki uh, prior to actually sort of uh, joining HEGF as an investment manager. At the moment, um, here I have a portfolio of 10 companies, uh, amongst them uh, sort of different sectors like energy, uh, industry 4.0, uh, biotech, mobility. Um, to give you a sense, so HEGF um, is um, probably Germany and definitely uh, and probably also West Europe's largest VC. We're, as you mentioned already, a public private fund, which means that um, part of our funds come from uh, over 30 of the largest uh, German corporates, uh, including Bosch, Siemens and other ones. Um, and the other um, part comes essentially from the government to really enable um, us to uh, operate on a vast level, support uh, startups across the um, realm. Um, as you can see, to date, we have invested in over 670 technology companies, had close to 2,000 follow-on rounds with uh, all kinds of partners, and um, close to uh, just over 4 billion uh, euros under management and ha uh, over 150 exits uh, that have taken uh, successfully uh, taken past uh, uh, in the last years. Um, if we go and zoom in on some of those companies, especially on the uh, side of um, technology and energy, um, here some key players are like uh, Next Kraftwerke, who basically pioneered a, a lot of the uh, concepts that are now almost ubiquitous to the market in terms of virtual power plants uh, that effectively today are producing more energy or equivalent to six nuclear power plants. We have uh, organizations and companies like Resourcify who are focusing on uh, uh, the waste management and recycling of organizations. Uh, Fatsua, who are sort of in the e-bag space and driving sort of the uh, micromobility side in terms of electrification. And um, in this context, you might uh, notice that one flagship uh, or at least flagship companies in a space are missing is hydrogen, which is also one of the reasons why I'm here today and looking forward also to discussions that we're going to be having on that. Um, HEGF sees itself, besides as a direct investor in startups, also as a bridge to industry and corporates. Um, our fund is structured in such a way that uh, large corporates can get insights on companies, engage early on on projects uh, of co-development, and then also get involved in the uh, startup financing process themselves. As you may know, many um, corporates do have corporate venture capital arms, CVC, so to say, and uh, these allow them to also get involved. Typically, however, it is not at the early phases of a startup that they do get involved, but uh, later on in the Series A, Series B, when the company is more mature, when the business model has been validated, and when contract sizes of an order of magnitude much higher than pilot projects would uh, demand are possible, such that a, a long-term partnership is even possible. And so, uh, our role or the way we see our role is to um, make essentially the progress on the startup side transparent to industry and create uh, touch points such that these two uh, sides can work together and really strengthen uh, our innovative roadmap for the nation as a whole. Um, going forward, what we do in this space is uh, amongst many examples. One of them is the High Tech Partnering Conference. This is an event which really is dedicated on bridging this gap between industry and startup and showcasing uh, all these innovations that are coming on both sides out and having expert uh, workshop sessions, uh, one-to-ones um, and many other uh, sort of opportunities to really gauge these kind of interactions. 
further, if we look at what we essentially offer to startups directly, and I thought this one might be very helpful uh, for uh, our audience today, is that uh, as an early stage investor, we invest um, typically an uh, order of uh, 600,000 euros in the first round, usually in, uh, in, uh, in a structure with other investors, but we're also happy to be uh, the first and only investor. We um, very much focus on the idea and what the company is offering. Um, we, as in total, sort of offer startups up to 3 million financing across multiple investment rounds. Um, from our perspective, uh, from first investment until exit, there's usually a runtime of 10 years uh, on average. So this is quite a long journey and we really want to uh, be there across the entire journey. So we see ourselves uh, as the A to Z essentially in this investment space and provi uh, provide different um, sort of support and uh, solutions at different stages. So early on, it's a very strong focus on uh, product market fit, uh, ensuring that what you're developing makes sense and grips. Uh, later on, it's uh, more about partnering, uh, co-founding, uh, other VCs uh, that might be relevant to your space and network. And towards the end in the exit process, it's also like, um, we act as a soundboard also because we ourselves um, are not the people performing the exit, but the ones who would be working side by side by the startups to ensure that this uh, goes smoothly and to the benefit of all. Um, as such, um, for all companies uh, present and listening in today, feel free uh, to share your pitch decks with us. Hardware at hegf.de would be the web address. And uh, I look forward to the session now. Great. Thank you very much, Max, uh, for the introduction of Hightech Gründerfonds. Um, I think it's also very interesting to hear uh, where you get in or where you come in when, when it comes to investment in um, even at some point uh, hydrogen. Uh, we can we can uh, discuss this a little bit why um, hydrogen is so far not on your list but um, let's do this in the group so i'm very yeah. happy to see all the three guests together now and um, i would i would like to discuss a little bit um, what this means what all you stated what you described from your organizations and your approach it was what this means for hydrogen startup let me just um, begin with uh, what I said at the at the very um, beginning of the session. Um, there is a, a, an urgent need for funding on the on the startup side when when uh, startups dealing with hydrogen. On the other side, there seems to be a kind of let me say gold rush when it comes to uh, how to benefit and profit from the ramping up market of hydrogen. And it's not only about Germany or Europe, it's about a worldwide phenomenon, I think, um, because large amounts of hydrogen needed in Germany uh, will be imported from, from different countries. So it's an international thing. And um, let me just start with a very blunt question. Are you sure that a lot of startups at the moment would be ready for your programs or what kind of like vetting or what kind of uh, accelerating would startups need in order to be more visible for for investors because we think this is the most pressing thing um, we have a lot of startups around uh, that were facing the situation that for the last decades not years but decades there hasn't been a market for green hydrogen there hasn't been a market for many hydrogen applications at all and suddenly we have political goals in europe in germany worldwide and now hydrogen is one part of the big solution when we want to save our climate and we want to defossilize and decarbonize our industries. So um, we are facing a very interesting, very uh, diverse uh, scene of hydrogen startups. And we are facing kind of, let me say, classical vehicles for funding and financing. And I would like to get your impression of how to gap the bridge between this. Like, do you see a lot of hydrogen startups? Are they approaching you? And if not, 
um, would you like to be um, in contact and what kind of stage should the startups be in uh, so that it is interesting for you? Just jump in. Um, happy to, to do the leap of faith and start off here on this side. Um, it's a very good question. Um, if we look at the startups that we in general look at, uh, some of them have underwent an accelerating or um, an incubation program. Uh, many of them haven't as well. Uh, some come directly from universities, others sort of um, have been in industry and then spun out uh, their own sort of facility. So the the breadth and scope of where you start and how you end up being uh, sort of an investment in our portfolio is quite big. Uh, what, however, is important is that, um, and I've seen this in relation to the hydrogen bonanza, as you described it, um, that we're looking on our side for something that has a technological merit uh, where we can truly see that there's an innovation that um, is sort of basically a catalyst for the whole industry something that will make it easier faster or better to have the hydrogen roadmap implemented and often we uh, don't find this we find more like uh, startups who try a me too approach let's put it this way saying that you know this this is a up and coming thing and i would like to set up a business in this space and here i would say it's a more of a, um, a dogmatic uh, differentiation that we're following as opposed to a origin or setup kind of situation. So um, very spoken very clearly, High Tech Wonderfalls, as the name already says, is, is looking for these innovation in the tech uh, space. We are also open to occasionally to do a, what we call an execution play. A team that comes from the industry has very good understanding of the business and sides of things, and therefore proposes an innovative business model However, one should have to admit that hydrogen is not yet at this level where this economy is still in the making and the setting up. So a lot of the steps now necessary are essentially setting up infrastructure and infrastructure mm -hmm. would sit beyond the scope of a startup investment from our perspective. Mm -hmm. Just to kick off some uh, sort of uh, controversial discussion here, I'm throwing in oh. this in. I'm, uh, thank you very much. I think this is uh, very honest and it's very important to, to say so that um, uh, that is uh, at least uh, or to start with a reason why there is an H2 hub because our founding fathers and sporting companies also think like we should uh, introduce hydrogen startups to the kind of realities of what is going on in the market to integrate them and offer them an acceleration program as we already did for far, four very interesting startups in our first batch and we are calling for a next batch in October. So um, it is very important to, uh, to hear that these kind of preparations and um, kind of um, uh, learnings you get in these acceleration programs make it more um, more easier to talk to people um, financing and funding uh, startups which is I think very good and I think the point is duly taken that of course the hydrogen market is developing and we have a lot of ideas going on and I myself always say we have more ideas from the um, from uh, the substitution of energy carriers, from the transformation of certain industries. It's at the moment not so much a unicorn thing, like I have the new really bang uh, technology that will revolutionize the, the hydrogen industry. So I think it's more about the effect of what's what is what can be achieved by working in the hydrogen industry. And therefore, I would like to uh, switch to Yair and just um, ask again um, if I understood correctly. So the, um, the reduction of carbon, the, the uh, re reduction of the carbon footprint is one of your um, one of your settings where you're looking for startups and, and innovative um, ideas, as I understand. So 
it is it just like um, or how do I put it? Is it um, the re result of what this startup is doing that is of more kind of more value than what they are doing specifically? Or how do you uh, kind of uh, compare these uh, different approaches? Yeah. So, so there are a lot of topics here, um, and the ma many are controversial. I, I would start that we believe there is a huge possibility in the hydrogen market to grow unicorns, and we will not sit on the tree and wait till there is a hydrogen economy and start. I think this is why we are paid. This is we are here. We will, if we do so, we will never get to net zero. Uh, we are here to drive this uh, uh, transition, and 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 drive it is means we need to finance this transition. This is why we all exist, um, and I'm a strong believer in that. I mean. Um, I'll, I'll take uh, two examples. Uh, uh, switching to a, enabling the hydrogen economy, and hydrogen alone can reduce at least six gigatons of, of emissions. Yeah, so 12% of global emissions. This is a trillion dollar business. And what holds us off of, of, of scaling this, of this uh, economy is cost. So there is a premium today between green hydrogen, which costs roughly six dollar a kilo to product to produce, versus gray uh, hydrogen, which is a production of from natural gas SMR, which costs one dollar. A company that can close that gap will propel the entire market. Yeah. Let me give another example: a company that make can make liquefaction of hydrogen in, in, a, in a, a, a cut the cost, yeah, cooling down hydrogen to minus 253 degrees, 20 Kelvin, is very, very costly. If you find a company that can do that for cheap, that mm -hmm. is, it's, it's the next, uh, and I'm not exaggerating, that's the, the next Google, Microsoft, uh, uh, BP, these are the companies that we will see. Uh, it, it took um, uh, Shell, BP uh, uh, Chevron, sorry, to, to uh, do bad to this planet. And the companies that will undo this will be as big as these companies. So we see huge uh, uh, potential in, 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 in hydrogen uh, uh, companies. That said, you need to, the technology doesn't matter in a way. Yeah, the, what matters is to have a good enough technology that you can scale. And you need entrepreneurs that can do that. Uh, 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 at the end of the day, if you look at the big projects today in hydrogen, they are all, in again, staying with electrolyzers, but the same goes for fuel cell technologies and, and, and across the board in different, in different topics, as we said, across the value chain. Uh, uh, big corporates are using today PEM, electrolyzers, alkaline electrolyzers, despite the fact that these are not good for intermittent renewable electricity, yeah, because PEM needs continuous uh, uh, flow of, of energy to, to, to function well. So it's, it's, it's a bad electrolyzer, yet it's been sold left and right because the current startups that work on AEM, for example, but it could be also solid oxide, yeah, AEM uh, 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 um, electrolyzers, the membrane that they have, and we've seen so many other startups, the durability is still unclear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're not able to present something that the, that the industry can work with and scale that, then it doesn't matter that you have the next best membrane that and, and and we will will not be able to finance it. Yeah, we have to be able to take all these nascent technologies and execute. And it's all about execution. And in this question, mm. it's it's and it's not about having the best technology. It's about having the best entrepreneurs that can take can take can take a good enough technology. Maybe it's a great technology, and then execute and build one of a kind plan. Then build the second plan. Reduce the price and then. Uh, know how to work with the grants, know how to knock on doors and get more financing and, and non-dilutive capital to scale those things. And this is the name of the game. It's money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe, it's maybe, great maybe to, to Yeah, yeah, please do. 
maybe to add on this, I, I fully agree with uh, with what uh, Yair said. Uh, at the same time, I may also um, I, I was also um, reflect, uh, reflecting again about the the cases I had over the last year, and um, there were also cases that are um, in the stage before scaling up. Um, there was, for example, um, let's take the notion of of membrane uh, technology. There was a, there was a startup and and asking for uh, yeah. They had, they, had, they had two questions. They wanted to have some R&D money to optimize on their, to, to make a project to optimize on their membrane technology. At the same time, they were looking for a network uh, with, with, uh, to, uh, uh, to look for partners with whom they can do this research and development. This was also a very concrete question. So it was before scaling up. Or um, I remember another case when um, there was a, was a young entrepreneur and he was um, developing some new recycling technologies, recycling for re recycling of different materials. And he found out that uh, in, in doing so, there would also be the possibility to set up a side process to uh, generate hydrogen. And uh, it was not, he didn't know yet how efficient that could be. But in the end, he also asked me um, whether I could help him to find some R&D money to make it more on a, leave the laboratory scale and go into a more let's say um in in in, in a to make it to make a demonstration uh, generator there this was also a case and i think we we need all these we we need we need all these these innovations uh, in a in a broader range and uh, then also from there we can see okay which is really um which which is good to to be scaled up but we have also all these these, these small ideas um, that that need some more uh, research and development. This is at least what mm -hmm. I see from from the cases I had over the last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it is very interesting to hear. First, it's it's great to hear your enthusiasm, Yair, which is also uh, what drives us because we, um, of course, I do it very provocatively when I say, like, is it really so innovative? <laughs> We are convinced that there are a lot of great ideas. But what I hear from you three people and organizations is maybe um, a thesis or a hypothesis that it is also a value chain of funding that is needed. Because in order to prepare startups to be at the right place for scaling up and to be ready to have the one and only product or um, process uh, to scale up uh, uh, the market by reducing the costs in very cost intensive parts and very crucial parts of the hydrogen value chain, like the production of hydrogen and the cost of hydrogen is of course very relevant to, to many other parts of the value chain and to other use cases and so on. So am I right that it would be would be great to have a kind of value chain because you need seed money in order to support the startups in a very early stage because um, it is obviously quite difficult for them also to find money for developing their idea because many seed investors and many investors think like okay um, we need to have a proof that this idea is really getting to somewhere which is um, i think very important and the next step would be like um, to have, as Jan Peter said, a, a portion of R and D because you need to develop these things and you need um, you need some opportunities to do so. Am I right with this kind of value chain, or where do you all get in into the process? Max would be maybe at the end of the value chain. <laughs> well, it's a it's a good question. Um, if in Germany, for instance, we're lucky that we have a, such a strong program through EXIST to support these early on innovations prior to even having been founded as a company to really put in this time and effort to grow the business. And EXIST mm -hmm. uh, is an excellent program because it's not uh, just a, a few ten thousands or hundred thousands here, but it can easily go into the millions which allows companies for a stretch period of like two years, for instance, to really home in on how to make this uh, vision happen. Yeah, you very beautifully stated it. I mean, there is a massive opportunity out there and it's all about closing this gap between uh, gray and green energy um, and uh, thinking outside the box. And here startups, as we all know, are best positioned to do so because they're not cluttered or limited by any legacy. Uh, they can really start off, kick off fresh. 
um, we at High Tech Wonder Force know and uh, also uh, work with uh, a number of exist companies uh, to see when and how a financing route makes sense. So this is mm -hmm. actually quite early in that process. So basically from day one of founding as a company, uh, there might actually be a case already to get a start an investment. Um, so that's why we we wouldn't see ourselves as a classic Series A or later stage investor. But strictly speaking, our uh, even our benchmarks where we're only allowed to invest in companies younger than three years, uh, haven't raised more than 500,000 euros in capital and have uh, an impact in the sort of German economy. Um, with these three requisites, you quickly come to a very, very early stage in the business, uh, which means that we're often hands on with uh, how we support the companies in, in terms of developing to a scale up phase. Mm. Um, I would nonetheless not say that uh, the role of uh, accelerators is vital or equally and depending on the team and then so we don't, I would say, replace any of the players in the market. But we're, we're definitely here to fuel this early phase and, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and, uh, equally see the opportunities are vast and we're very eager uh, to support the teams who, uh, who present themselves with a very clever and innovative approach to drive them forward. Mm -hmm. So was just one comment to that. Um, when we made our survey um, among 160 European hydrogen startups, and this is basically the number we found. It's not like 5% of the whole total, but it's about 160 startups in Europe. Um, the, the outcome was first uh, when you mention uh, how old should a startup be when you have are allowed, as you said, invest in them. Um, the statement in the survey was like the majority of the startups were three to five years, and there were even there was a great number of startups even older than five years, although never earning a cent and never making money with it, but being around with a great idea, finding no funding, finding no partners, finding no corporates interested in this. And we are definitely convinced from the H2 Hub that it is necessary in the hydrogen startup world to kind of step back from these classical definitions, who is a startup and who is not, and who is like, uh, at least the age shouldn't be a key factor. The team is of course key, and the idea and technology of course is, is, is the most important thing, um, but like kind of these um, formal regulations to be allowed to invest in some startup that is three years old or two years old and has um, these kind of at that of back. This is just a, a statement that we think it's very important to step back from that. And therefore, we as a H2 hub, we do not uh, take into account how long somebody is around as long as the team is OK or not OK. The team is great and the idea is really great and then uh, we proceed to support them. This was just a comment on that. Um, I, Uwe, I have a Uwe, question. Maybe I'll, yeah. maybe I'll, ch I'll chime in on this. Uh, um, what we look at, at, the co at companies or generally what we, I think what's important to differentiate is again, we use the technology readiness level uh, 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 ladder that has been, uh, been used by NASA. Uh, which basically differentiate between uh, it's one to nine, but but basically it's it's three levels. One is research and is research, pure research. The other is development, and the the last one is deployment. If you wish, mm -hmm. there are uh, deployment is where uh, solar and and uh, wind is now. These are bankable products that today. Uh, uh, banks are our private equity is is financing the research uh, part is where government is supposed to give the grants and, um, and and support basic research and in development that's where the venture capital industry should come in and take those things out of the lab and prepare them for prime time and that's how we try to classify. And when we look at companies, we, we don't mm -hmm. ask ourselves how old they are, but in which stage are they? Yeah, Are they still doing pure research? Because if they do, 
they should apply for, maybe they shouldn't have found a company yet and stayed in university and apply for Exist. But if they did, maybe they should apply for EIC uh, Horizon uh, uh, money. Yeah? Because mm -hmm. you need to match the right source of capital to the right stage of, of company. If, if it's pure research, we sh as VC, we should not invest there because mm -hmm. it will create a mismatch and tension between the two. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, age is not uh, is not uh, one of the important things. As you said, it's more the readiness level. I totally agree. And uh, but when it comes to uh, let me state again from the survey, when it comes to the first phase of we are R&D orientated, we are at a university or just out of a university, obviously it's for the startup. It seems to be very, very complicated to find the right uh, fund or to find the right approach to get funding. And Jan Peter, maybe you can make some comments on that. That um, um, maybe also there it is not. Uh, so easy for a hydrogen startup to to find a way into the right program because um, as was stated before hydrogen is not an industry it's not even a vertical it's it's a thing you deal with and uh, maybe some sometimes it's even better to apply for mobility funds or to apply for energy generating funds than for looking for a special hydrogen program um, would you say that there is kind of movement on the front of um, R&D funding and like early stage funding um, and how can, can we like communicate to the startups which path to take and where to look for the right um, um, the like funding scheme? Um, it's I, I, I cannot say in how far there is there there is a movement. I mean, it's, it, it's a good question. At least what what we try to do as as part of our business is really to 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 support and and to give advice on yeah to find the uh, and to find the right programs. Um, uh, and in particular, also what 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 Yair said um, to have the yeah to have the right funding for the right moment for the right stage of development, right? And um, yeah, it's it's this is this is actually what, what what we do, and we try to have an overview over the the whole landscape of where to get money. And also, what I try to make uh, clear is that uh, it's it's uh, do not only look for as a startup. You, you of course, it's 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 important to look for startup programs, but it's not only startup programs that might help you. There can be also other programs. I mean, and this is the example of R and D, right? R and D money can it can be for for all type of of uh, companies. And um, yeah, this is this is where we try to help. And and us as the uh, as the um, NIV Bank, we also have um, a, a kind of, of of schedule, or also in which phase is the company and which programs we offer as a bank, and also um, which other programs might fit depending on the stage of development of an innovation or of a, of a maturity of a company. And um, yeah, we also and, and I mentioned we have, for example, also it, it's it's the uh, us as the advisory center for economic development, but also our uh, venture capitalists. They also have uh, in particular expertise on this. And yeah, this is also part of our business. To make a long story short, this is also part of our business mm -hmm. to help here to find the right money for the for the right moment, if you want to put it like this. Yeah. Okay, so I take it as a task for us to provide startups with information about these different stages of um, uh, readiness level and where to look for the right fund. But let me skip to another question for you three. Um, we see, uh, of course, the value chain, as we have seen and you have stated, is very long. And of course, it contains of very different kinds of technologies. So do you see it is or do you think it's easier for a digital startup dealing with hydrogen technologies or the hydrogen economy? It is easier for them to find partners or funding because like a very capex intensive uh, hardware deep tech uh, uh, solution could be more cost intensive, more risky even. Do you see there's a difference between like um, digital market and process solutions than like hardware technology? Is there a difference? In the, uh, I mean, in the achievability of like finding financing partners. 
I can give my, our opinion. We don't care about the technology. Uh, you know, the, 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 on the surface, uh, you're tempted to say, yeah, it's easier for the, for the software guys. Uh, from our perspective, we don't care what the technology is. Okay. We care about okay. product market fit. The biggest question yeah. is, is this software, to, 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 to go to your, to your question, really needed? Is, is that really making a dent in, in the production? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Is it uh, uh, um, solving supply and demand problems? Um, just uh, yet again, blockchaining, uh, uh, dropping hydrogen into the grid, whatever. Uh, so what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Max, it is the same with you. Like, is it more risky, think, less risky, or does it? Is it like anyway? Well, first to pick up on Yehi's comment, that's so true. Um, when you review a startup investment case, you you first should look at it completely agnostic and say, okay, uh, great innovation, yes, but uh, do we see a market potential for that? Can the startup already, you know, show us some evidence in that direction? Have they, you know? One sad truth of tech-driven companies is that often they've never spoken to a customer. They've assumed a, a market, they've assumed a potential, read online a few things and made their story, but they have not spent one day or one hour actually calling someone and saying, hey, this is what we do, do you, do you want it? Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, th this is, I think, a key question uh, in any way, uh, all of SPAP. I would also go a step further. Um, having uh, we at HGGF are very happy to invest also in hardware uh, startups. Uh, this made us a bit of a unique player because it isn't so easy to find a hardware company because the complexity of understanding the risk involved in funding such a business is higher than with a start uh, with a software or digital innovation. You um, you know. It's a simple thing like, uh, do we need to buy this large machinery or can we buy smaller machinery? What will be the consequences, A or B? These kind of questions don't really come up with a digital tech company. Mm -hmm. And you will lose a lot of the investors along the way in terms of their um, comfort zone of saying that we would like to invest. So what we have noticed is that there are camps in the market of going left or right. And what we then do is try to, um, you know, where we know that uh, people are agnostic, like Yair yeah, was beautifully stating it, we then say, talk to those people. Uh, they're probably uh, going to be open for you to, as a hardware company or as a SaaS or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. And where we know that there's a, a, a kind of a flavor and a comfort zone, then we say, you know, based on mm -hmm. our experience, they're probably going to say yes or no, uh, but mm -hmm. see for yourself as well. So that's uh, that's how we approach that subject um with a scope of 40 investments that we do each year in the st startup scene of new companies um we deliberately go a step out of this uh, boxing of SaaS or non SaaS, and really look at all of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah really interesting and uh, again i i check another box on my list and behind me you see i'm um, uh, now here the matchmaking part is of course one of the most important parts because i totally agree it's so important to check your idea with an industry partner to talk to potential customers to like dare to talk to a customer although uh, maybe you do not have the right solution and uh, maybe you are afraid to ask the wrong questions but we think it's really important and therefore a network like ours seems to be or is obviously quite important because we invite industrial people from different sectors, from different industry to just listen to startup ideas and um, and uh, just to, to find out and in a dialogue to find out, is this a suitable thing? And as Yair said, is this relevant for, for the market ramp up? Or is it just a fancy, nice idea? Is it really relevant because we are all looking at a big scale market? It's a gigawatt market. It's an international thing. Uh, so therefore, um, there's a lot of potential in really um, big scale uh, projects. So 
Um, and, and I think the, the very early approach of a potential customer or the like um, discussion of an idea with uh, partners from different industries is always a very good idea. Um, I have, uh, we indeed have one question from the audience and it goes to Yair and it's interesting uh, and it states like from, from Dieter Gebhardt, would you also invest in the decarbonization of oil and gas industry, for example, by a KI based technology for a significant increase of the efficiency of their processes in oil and gas, or how do you see that? It's a very good question and a very controversial one. So whatever I say now, it's uh, it's going to be controversial. Um, yes and no. So as 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 a fund, we uh, first of all we don't think yes, oil and gas industry is the one that um, did bad to for the planet, but it's also the one that is uh, powered us up and in, in everything we wear and, and, and eat and we see what is the importance of the energy sector uh, these days. So um, yes, these are maybe the culprits, the guys that polluted, but at the same time, we strongly believe these are the guys that we need to take hand in hand and transform them uh, um, in order to become a, a green industry. Now, it is going to take a lot of time. So we cannot just say, hey, we ignore these guys. These are the bad guys. We don't work with them. We don't innovate. And now we're going to wait till the Messiah is going to come and going to save us. Because energy transition, if uh, I can highly recommend reading any of uh, Veslav Smil's uh, uh, books on energy transition, it's going to take many years and anybody that tells you differently is doesn't know the facts. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take at least 50 years to divest from fossil fuels and, and, and ramp while we ramp up other means of energy. And we see the consequences in Germany today when you try to ramp up uh, uh, renewables and not understanding the meaning of it uh, or understanding and ignoring and what does it do to you when when there is a problem yeah so gas and and i i specifically look at in gas gas is going to stay with us for many 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 years so now the question is on this transition 50 years we can let it emit methane as is or should we innovate and do as much as we can to reduce those emissions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's not popular, but we opt for the latter. Yeah. Even at mm -hmm. the cost of extending gas lifetime by another decade, eventually it mm -hmm. will go down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we need to process and therefore just uh, uh, ousting the industry as an industry is is not something now would we invest in a technology that ex extends the lifetime of a coal plant probably not yeah so mm. it comes in many uh, shades and flavors i would say mm. yeah thank you for that i i have to admit i really agree and it brings me to a comment that uh, when we started the h2 hub there was a cause a different situation last summer uh, we didn't have a war, we didn't have a, a real pressure on energy markets worldwide. So there was a different approach. And at that time, there was a huge weight of political goals, at least in Germany, on this topic. Like when we're talking about hydrogen and talking about this project and how to fund it and get partners for it, it was about, oh, you're dealing with green hydrogen only, please, because uh, this is the one and only way um, to make it really a green and climate friendly, defossilized, not even decarbonized industry, but defossilized industry. And uh, now it's, of course, has changed. And I see it, um, it's now a little bit more or a lot more pragmatic at the moment, um, as, as Yair said, um, um, as far as it is useful, we have to put a lot of emphasis in the kind of 
I hate the word bridging technology, but it will be a bridging technology maybe. And therefore, it's also worthwhile to, to talk and to exchange views internationally with countries, for example, where blue hydrogen is seen as a very promising te technology, at least for a few decades before we have other options for producing green um, hydrogen. And therefore, we encourage startups also in Germany, where many regulations and very many approaches are still very much dominated by the real and the true way um, uh, to, to do um, or to work on their ideas. Um, maybe with the effect that they have to go to another European country to implement it because it, it seems easier. So the international dimension and the, the, the big challenge is uh, is also there. So um, yeah, add a to on that. Yeah. Yeah, please yeah, do. Um, um, I, I, com I can completely echo this. We um, as people who are investing in organizations that are going to be economic actors, um, we have to be pragmatic to a certain way and not overly dogmatic. I think uh, forcing startups to only go the uh, sort of theoretically pure way is not, not the right approach. Mm -hmm. However, and here the caveat, um, let's not focus so much on when the uh, founding day was of the startup, but in an early phase of a business, it's not yet a market player. It's an innovative concept, they're pilot projects, etc. So it typically takes five years for a startup from this, you know, we haven't spoken to customers to we are uh, now someone who can work with large organizations like Linda to su uh, supply hydrogen in the industry and other things. And you have to, uh, in that space, ask yourself the question, in five years time, how will the world look like? such that my business will today um, not moving the needle much, but then be uh, appropriately set mm -hmm. up. And um, and there, exactly, it's a very much this uh, sort of kind of play on, is it the blue, is it the green hydrogen that will dominate in which areas of the world, where will this startup be actually operational and influential? And these kind mm -hmm. of considerations, I think, are also what makes our role, the three of us here, uh, really exciting because in a way we're, we're all people, uh, you know, futurists. We're thinking of how the world will look like in five, 10 years. And if this startup will lead us to that future and will it be a dominant player, as you said, will it be the next Google or Microsoft and or mm -hmm. uh, Shell for that matter? Um, so I think uh, this is also a great thing. and. Visionary founders are ones that uh, even we struggle to accept, despite our sort of forward looking, and uh, they then sort of enlighten us in a way uh, to that new world. And uh, in that space, for instance, next Kraftwerke, at the time when we made the investment, very few people were actually really convinced. It was pretty much the core team at HEGF directly involved with the team who actually understood what was going on. The rest. You know, it's just, wow, so far ahead. And like 10 years later, now it's like super sexy. Everyone loves it. Uh, and the business model is being replicated. So these kind mm -hmm. of uh, stories, I think, are at the core of um, this investing as well as in the startup scene. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, right. Um, I, I, I agree. Um, it's very interesting. So for for a last round of comments, I would ask you a question like the other way around. We have a lot of um, information from startups. They have a lot of demands. They have a lot of wishes uh, towards your guys, how to make it easier for them to find out what way of funding, what way of uh, financing is the right way. When we, when we turn this situation around, what would be your advice to hydrogen startups how to prepare themselves for talks, how to like present themselves at, at pitching events or whatever. Um, do you have a piece of advice for hydrogen startups uh, to be more visible? What, what would it be when I ask you, how should the hydrogen startups present themselves to you? Yeah, Peter, please don't state with a formally corrected form. <laughs> because no, sometimes you have not. To... I'm... 
Yeah, no, I'm just I was asking asking myself what 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 advice I can I can give you. I mean, I, I, uh, I detected two questions uh, in in your one question as far as I under interpreted it. It's one it's uh, it's about the visibility and and uh, on top what 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 you you can also ad advise to them. And I mean, it's it's about. Um, Getting more professional on the on the on the financial structure, on the on how to finance the companies and so on. This is again, uh, this is how we can uh, where we can give advice. And we have it, it's it's not it's not up to me. We have uh, two experts on our team who are focusing exactly on this to to guide them to to optimize the financial structure and so on. Uh, about the visibility, for example, I think there are um, there are different ways uh, which we haven't touched so far um, and it's yeah it's one you get they, they they have the chance to use networks like we do for example today with the h2 up really to to partner up to team up with other companies and also and, and all these networks are also a tool to let's say build their capacity right and i think this is this is also important and this is an aspect we haven't touched today and this is for example also what we give advice on which are the right networks uh, startups either in the in the hydrogen sector or also other startups which are the right networks they might uh, want to join we have for example a wonderful initiative here in north Westphalia. it's the circular valley it's an accelerator program it's a, it's a capacity building program for companies in the field of of circular economy and also um, green hydrogen startups fall into this category, for example. And what they can also, what what another options, what what you could do as a startup is also to watch out for, let's say, um, yeah, competitions, um, uh, Wettbewerbe, and there are also um, competitions. There are startup competitions. There are circular economy uh, competitions, and uh, really to 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 gain visibility through. Um, through through being awarded in a competition, for example, this is also mm -hmm. an option. And uh, yeah, this is um, this is maybe yeah my 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 answer to to your question. Great. Who's next? Max seems um, to be ready. Yeah. yeah, let me go and then give the uh, word to Jair. Um, and I would say in terms of heightening your uh, profitability or your profile with uh, us, um, it's very much a simple matter of just sharing a pitch deck, getting in touch, reaching out. Um, there's no magic to involved in that. Uh, as we already discussed today, uh, one thing we would uh, sort of look for and uh, sort of encourage any startup applying is to really have had an exchange with the industry up front, uh, mm -hmm. spoken to people, um, mm -hmm. spoken to them critically and uh, listened for reasons why uh, it wouldn't be a fit uh, and be able to comment on that. Um, you know, it's very hard if you fall in love with an idea to have this uh, essentially destroyed and handed back to you by someone outside. And that fear is, uh, I think, what's stopping many people from just having those open conversations. But across the board, what you will find out is that the minute you share that you're a startup and you're driving forward this idea, you will get extreme, uh, a lot of goodwill from everyone. And people will be more than happy to give you critical as well as insightful feedback to your business. Uh, and so I highly encourage the exchange. Um, here, a classic barrier is also patterns um, and things that you know, core ideas that you want to safeguard. Mm -hmm. um, here again, anything that is in a patent process, you don't, you shouldn't disclose because otherwise you cannot patent it anymore. Uh, but it often doesn't need that level of detail. It just needs a very clear description of, you know, basically what are you doing? Why is it special? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. how will this impact the market or the, you know, the mm -hmm. our sort of life essentially? And I think um, this uh, sort of working out this as every day over and over again, because it constantly changes, is at the core of all of this work. And mm -hmm. uh, companies that approach us with that are ones that we would love to, you know, uh, get involved with and uh, take forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. So, Yair, 
Yeah, maybe I'll start with uh, one word of an uh, encouragement. Um, I think that there is a lot of potential. Uh, uh, if I look at uh, Europe and, and, and especially Germany, Germany is, has a history of, of chemistry. Um, the two most important uh, um, processes in, in, in hydrogen were invented in, in Germany in the beginning of the early um, 20th century. If we look at uh, the Fischer-Tropsch process that takes hydrogen together with the, with the carbon and creates synthetic fuels, that's one. And of course, the Haber-Bosch process that takes nitrogen with hydrogen and creates ammonia that feeds the planet. So, so in this regard, there is a history of innovation, and I think that many more innov innovative companies can come out of uh, uh, out of Europe and, and, and Germany. So that's a word of encouragement. Now, what? How should you prepare yourself? And I'll exaggerate a little bit. I would say if your if your deck is twenty pages. There should be one page on the technology, one page on the team, and then 18 slides on how you're going to make money. Mm -hmm. Business, how you're going to scale it, what the unit economics, how you're going to do it better, and the technical economic uh, uh, analysis of your facility, one of a kind, n of a kind. This is what really matters, not mm -hmm. the technology. Technology is mm -hmm. the beginning, mm -hmm. but in order to you have to have a business and focus on that. From my perspective, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, this is a very valuable piece of advice. Um, we, of course, see a lot of pitch decks and sometimes um, this advice um, is not really um, taken into account when the, when the people create their pitch decks. I have to admit that... Um, I am I was, an engineer, I, I know that. So no, 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 as no. an engineer... We tend to talk technology. Yeah. Now I, I take it really on uh, as another task on my list because many startups state like, yeah, it can, could, cannot be about the pitch deck and it cannot be about this and that. Look at my technology. But I'm convinced that, that the form how to present your idea and the form how you um, uh, present your idea, how to approach and to roll over the market. It's really, really important. And uh, from my perspective, I've seen a lot of pitch decks. I always was really, uh, um, really thrilled when I've seen pitch decks sometimes from other uh, cultural backgrounds or other countries. Israel is a really good example. Uh, if you compare that with pitch decks from Germany or sometimes from Asia or other regions, it's it's obviously a technique we should uh, watch out for an international best practice. So uh, thanks for this advice. Um, unfortunately, we have come very close to the end of this session. And uh, for uh, as a last remark from the chat, um, I'm really thrilled that Sebastian Justo Schmidt from Enapta is uh, watching us and he's giving uh, some thoughts. Um, he says a, a bit off topic. Thanks for the interesting discussion. We as Enapta are very happy that AAM technology was also mentioned. We have hundreds of installations also in NRW. So thank you, H2Hub and participants. And I give this thank you, of course, back to my and our participants. And thank you very much for um, giving us your time, giving us your insight and giving us your expertise. I'm, I'm sure that this is just a kickoff for a longer and more intensive process of uh, cooperation. And it was very important for us in the first round to talk about the financing topic because this will be a topic for edge to hub I think, for many more deep dives and many more meetups and many more um, um, uh, things that we would like to do. And finally, I would like to state that obviously we are getting what seems to be important because I would like to mention at this point that we are trying to create a lot of opportunities and a lot of options for hydrogen startups to get in contact with industry and business, small and medium sized companies as well as corporates. We are organizing joint startup booth as industrial trade fairs. In September, we'll be at the Carbon Expo in Düsseldorf. Uh, for example, we are talking about um, 
we are talking about the FSL in Stuttgart and other opportunities. And maybe one of the biggest issues we are focusing at the moment is that we are part of the Hydrogen Week of Hydrogen Europe in October in Brussels, where h 2 Hub is also organizing a joint startup booth and bringing European hydrogen startups to the stage um, in Brussels, which is, of course, very important when we are talking about visibility and other things. So finally, if Lars, you could be so kind to give me the speakers back again, um, I'm offering a, a big round of applause to you. Thank you so much. It was very interesting and I'm happy to see you on this or other occasions again. And thank you very much for contributing today. And I wish you a pleasant weekend as we have all earned it now. And thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.